is the cubic cases in San Diego Police Department from the student $10,700 grant from the state and Maryland Law Department. If you remember when he made his budget presentation a week ago, um, he indicated that he would be required to make a cubic survey unless he could change it up to carry all that equipment. Uh, he did change it up to his ethics and uh, there's no longer the need for a cubic sample. It's now $5,000. Learning Committee did a fabulous job of educating the public as to what our needs were and what our cost per beneficial week of take was. that a lot of people in the culture were struggling with you know, the cost of uh, doing it and a lot of those people just decided that they felt that they had deal with the issue and they handled it. Uh, I did get a uh, phone call from somebody who said that they didn't know it was coming. Uh, I didn't have much of a response but he ended up with this. Uh, the only concern to the general public is that uh, there's been uh, lots of discussion on this since last November beginning in November, uh, the weekly approved meetings, school committee meetings, the civil legal committee public hearings, uh, the, the, the town meeting warrant that was sent to every household, uh, the community, uh, the administration met every obligation that it was required to do and that was to adequately notify uh, the general public. I did uh, a public hearing on it. Two people, the 
trying to rake that in. thing is, I'd just like to remind people what uh, this board took a position a couple of months ago in relation to uh, if you want to invest in some real estate in Knox Redding, it's uh, Riverside. Uh, we're doing great at the cemetery. We're going to, the lot prices are going to go up the 1st of July. So uh, if you're investing in a little bit of real estate at Riverside Cemetery, I would suggest that you, uh, you do it before July 1st because it's prices will be going up. And finally, I'd just like to uh, recognize Firefighter Dick Pierce, uh, who passed away this past week in service as a <coughs> Saturday. Uh, he's a uh, very devoted public servant, uh, got injured, actually uh, had a stroke on the job about 20 years ago, and has been disabled ever since. And the one thing that I can say uh, for certain, and I hope for sure, is that uh, his fellow firefighters know his name. Uh, in the two decades that he's been services his uh, his brothers it was a call for him and they uh, they did a fabulous job of giving him a send off on Saturday and I was so proud to be there and uh, to witness what the Knox Valley Fire Department goes through and I have a lot of love for that man. And uh, in honor of my family and my condolences I uh, thank you for uh, sharing uh, Dick with us in time of the service. big book and we talked about maybe possibly moving that into more of an electronic media and a uh, version of it rather than a paper version and then having some limited access to the paper version for the people that don't have access to the electronic version. Is that something we can do between now and June 20th? Is that something to obey it in the long arms? I think doing it now would include cut back to the long arm and uh, just the e -book. Great. So we have talked to the developers of the electronic version. How can we have that as an option to have it available? Still have to produce the paper copy for the electronic. I understand. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Discussions are only going to stay going, so if you don't do it, I think we'll just bounce right back to the uh, paper form. Yeah, I think we'll cut that. We'll cut that glass. Take, take the front. <laughs> take the last few. We'll cut that. And this year we're cutting back the glass. Okay. We'll cut that glass. Well, what we do is we go and look and see how many we still mm -hmm. still have in the boxes still, and that we can we can add to them if that's what you want to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass something around. bills and this one happens to be my personal property from my business and that's what I use for that. Good talk. But they have a nice thing they do and it's called uh, Helping Your Neighbor and I've been checking around some other towns for this as well and, and it's just basically a voluntary fund they built and it's called the Senior and Disabled Action Fund to help their seniors and their disabled uh, neighbors. And you know, take a look at this and I really would like the board to consider doing <coughs> something like this in our town. Um, it's all voluntary. Through this whole process about the schools and how expensive and how the burden it should have on our 
seniors. And I will have to say, I was actually very impressed by the senior community here in this town. Most I talked to really said, you know what, we've neglected this for a long time. And they, they stood up and they actually voted in favor of it. So many of them did, and I, I congratulate them. Um, when I saw this, I said, this is a great idea because I know a lot of the younger people I've talked to in this town said, I, I am fearful for our seniors in town. How is this going to affect them? And you know, some may want to voluntarily submit a, um, a tax relief, or not tax relief, make a donation towards this fund. And when I talked to the Middleton Town uh, Finance Director for this, they actually have a built a board, and Deb Carbone is one of the board members of that finance office. Uh, and if I'm assessed to hear from our town, so they actually have people from outside of their town on this board that manages that money. They raise around Separate against anything else being put forward. I will go out to the Chamber of Commerce and talk to them about this. Okay. Uh, I believe they shared this. that he would actually give us a copy of the town manager if we were interested in doing this and he would also give us and through Deb he would give her um, through her she would just provide us how they manage it and the restrictions they put on it how they created their board uh, he even told me um, <coughs> they have a, somebody from the council on aging they have two board members from the board of selectmen on that committee um, somebody uh, Deb Carboni an assessor here in North Walton uh, I think Deb is in North Walton um, I, I just think it's something I would like the board to consider and that's why I too am concerned, and as I've expressed previously, concerned for those in town that this is going to be a hardship for all. Uh, I just want to remind people that, as has been printed in the transcript as well as reported in patch, uh, uh, I had both office hours here in Town Hall a week, Friday, uh, April 13th. 